getting to be able to go out on a boat in Seward is kind of a special thing because most of the natural beauty in this area is by boat, being on the water and going out and seeing other parts of Alaska that you can only see by boat. And to me, that was extremely exciting and like pretty high anticipation. I'm pretty comfortable when it comes to being in the water. I feel at home around the ocean. The, the ocean to me is, is a place that I go to reflect and reset and, and kind of meditate. So being on the water, it grounds me. The water itself is cold, but it looks tropical. And it's just, it's this whole new ocean experience that I've really loved experiencing. The anticipation of just seeing the place, I had seen pictures, but it's seeing it in person. and You see all the yurts just kind of like going up in elevation through this like little canyon along a stream. And it's, and it's kind of surreal because you're out in the middle of nowhere and then you just pull into this cove and there's just like this like magical little village. It's more than just an inside frame, it's a full on experience. All right, today I'm in a beautiful yurt village called Shearwater Cove. It's at the end of Resurrection Bay in Alaska near Seward. And the only way to get here is by boat. And the adventure, this whole place is an adventure and it starts with the boat ride. It's absolutely incredible. It's honestly was probably my favorite part of the trip so far. If you're lucky, you'll see puffins and sea lions and whales. I had one of the most incredible close encounters with the whales I've ever seen in my entire life. Here in Shearwater Cove, there are four yurts. One small one and three big ones. The one behind me here, it's a big one. This is the one that I'm gonna show you. All three big ones are identically the same. So let's go check this one out and see the inside. All right, welcome inside of the yurt. When you notice, it's one big giant room. So let me start on this side and we'll take you all the way around. So as I take you clockwise around the yurt, the first thing you'll notice are the table and chairs. The table and chairs, the cool thing about them is they're outdoor indoor. So you can take them out on the patio on a sunny day, which I would totally recommend because this place is absolutely beautiful and outside is where you wanna be. They have in here a guest book where you can sign it and see what other people have said about the place. And then they have the construction booklet kind of showing how this place was built, uh, which is really, really cool. And then an information binder that has a little bit of information about everything because this place is completely off the grid. There is no phone service. And the only way to get in contact are through these like information sheets. So through these information sheets is how you get all the information about the place because if you don't read this, you won't know because you can't just like call up the owner and ask them um, a question because it's impossible. So one thing they do have down here are a bunch of board games, which is really cool because Alaska gets rainy a lot. And if it's too rainy, you don't have anything to do. You can all play board games together, which I think is a really cool idea. And then you've got a nightstand over here full of books. Again, this place is relaxing and quiet. so. You can just grab a book and start reading it. And most of the literature is about local Alaskan topics. They also have a lantern here, which is the only light source in the entire yurt. Here during the summer in Alaska, you don't need light. The only time you really need it is at like 2 a.m. When you work your way around the yurt, you'll get to the bedroom side of it or just the bed. And uh, I will say I spent the night out here last night and it's one of the best night's sleeps I've ever had in my entire life because it's just so quiet out here and the only noise at night is just a running stream and I can tell you, I've never been so relaxed in my life. I was supposed to wake up early to go on a hike, but I was just so comfortable. I was like, nope, I'm staying in bed, <laughs> never leaving. So when you keep coming around the bed, you'll notice the heater. This is a propane heater. As you know, in Alaska, it gets cold. During the summer on the sunny days, you might not need the heater, but during the rainy days, it's definitely nice to have this to get the yurt nice, warm and toasty. The first thing in the kitchen that you notice is this cart with a butcher's block on top of it, which gives you a space to prep all your food while you cook. 
And then a beautiful use of space that they have is down below this is a, a movable cart with all your plates, bowls, mugs, cups, and, and pots and pans. Um, there's also a, a cutting knife in there, a kitchen knife. And this this spot is really cool as you can you know, move it from, from side to side if, if you need to and get it out of the way. There's also this really cool painting here of Shearwater Cove right above this. So it's a, a nice little piece of art that livens up the whole room. And then as you move over into the kitchen, you've got a two burner stove. Uh, all of this is run off of propane. So you will need the lighter to light the stove top. Uh, you've got a kettle to heat up some water. And then if you like a coffee in the morning, you've got a French press with some, some coffee grounds here. That's all taken care of for you when you get here. Also at, throughout the kitchen is we have uh, olive oil and salt and pepper to season your food. One thing about this place is you do have to bring your food in on the boat ride because everything that you're gonna eat while you stay here is something that you have to bring in. It's because it's not like you can just go to the restaurant right up the road because it doesn't exist. A sink where it runs hot water and cold water, soap to wash your hands, and then also this container here is full of drinking water. So you'll want to drink the water out of here and not out of the tap. So underneath the kitchen is a drying rack for the dishes, some paper towels, and some other cleaning supplies. You'll also notice this red canister here that is bear spray. There's also a first aid kit. So out here in the Alaska wilderness, you're in the middle of nowhere, it's nice to have a first aid kit just in case something happens. And it's also nice to have a bear spray because bears do live in the Alaskan wild bush and that's exactly where we are here. So it's nice to take that out on hikes and walks and even have it as a safety net here while you're staying in the yurt. All right. This brings us to the last side of the yurt, which is the futon, which could be used to sit down and, and enjoy the morning with your cup of coffee or having a visit with somebody else in the room. But it also folds down into another bed. So this yurt can hold up to four people easy. Two people on the bed, two people on the futon sleeping at night. The futon, dual purpose, uh, it's an extra bed and it works as a seating space. Uh, in these small spaces, it's always really cool to have something that has more than one use. I think that's very important in tiny living and uh, this is utilized very well here with the futon and the indoor outdoor tables and chairs. Well, and then you notice at the entrance of the door, we have this blue bag that is a VHF radio for when people go out kayaking. It's also a way to get in contact with emergency services if, if you absolutely need it. Hopefully you don't, but this is a good safety precaution to have on top of the bear spray and first aid kit. They do have emergency response uh, instructions. So if something does go wrong, you'd be able to get out of here, no problem and be, and be completely safe because that's the number one priority always. So the yurts are made of a canvas material. It's almost like a tent, but there is also a three season insulation in here. So during, you know, spring, summer and fall, this place can stay completely warm and is very comfortable to sleep in. Uh, they also have the plastic windows so you can get a nice view of the outdoors where you're up in the trees. It's almost like a tree house, but I love the windows. I think they're pretty cool. The fact that you can have them in a tent is really cool. There's also a skylight window that lets most of the light in. And here in Alaska, like I touched on earlier, is it's pretty much sunny all day long. So the light just comes right through the ceiling and brightens this place right up. And if you look at the sides of the yurts, they're also made from these uh, wooden planks and it goes all the way around. Not only is it functional to keep the yurt strong and on the roof as well, but I think it looks really cool. It's, it's very symmetrical. It's almost like art all the way around. It shows a really cool pattern. So this is something about the yurt that, I, that I'm really a big fan of and apparently um, I was talking to the guy. It only takes about two hours to put the yurts up. Um, once the once the building platform is made, the yurt goes right up in two hours. So then you've got a a temporary permanent living space. Uh, I think they're I think they're completely 100% awesome.
All right, so when you come outside, this is the bathroom. You have to walk outside to get to the bathroom, but it is in this uh, corrugated aluminum siding with a clear roof, so it lets the light in. I also really like the uh, boat cleat door handle, so let's check out the bathroom. So once you're in the bathroom, it's a pretty spacious area. You've got a sink on this side, and then you've got your shower head, and you've got cold and hot water. And if you open up this curtain here, this is a little bit of privacy, you open up this curtain here, you'll see we have an on-demand hot water heater. So you have unlimited hot water to take the longest hot shower you want, which is honestly, it's a huge plus here in Alaska because you will get cold, especially after kayaking. If you get wet, a nice hot shower will warm your core and you, you feel nice and comfortable. Then they've also got a uh, nature's head composting toilet. So it saves on water and, and waste and I've got one of these composting toilets in my van and I absolutely love it. They're great, they don't smell, they don't stink, and they're pretty easy to use. And if you're unfamiliar with how these composting toilets work, they do provide an, uh, an instruction sheet here to kind of walk you through. So this is the bathroom. It's a pretty simple setup, but it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, you, you can look down through the slats of the wood and see the ground and hear the river while you're, uh, while you're taking a shower or doing the business. And then that brings us to my favorite part of Shearwater Cove and the yurts, and it is the patio sitting area. You can just sit out here and enjoy the trees and the sound of the river and look at the amazing view. There's mountains across the bay, there's the ocean, there's everything to do. They have kayaks and all that fun stuff to do while you're out here and hikes. You're in the woods and what else is better than that? When the boats aren't running out there, it's completely silent. And so the only noise you hear is the wind and the trees and then that stream running through the property. It's just an insanely good place to just relax and just take in the sounds. You're in the middle of nature in the Alaskan wilderness around the ocean and these mountains and the stream and everything just comes together in this like magical experience that is just insanely relaxing. The fact that I got to spend only two days out there, I will say those were the two best days that I've experienced in Alaska. And, and leaving that, I had a new take and a new breath of being one with nature and love for Alaska.